Welcome to this episode of Code Talk. I'm Nora, Developer Advocate. I'm your host today. And with me, I have Katharina Schell. She is Chief Product Owner of AI Services at SAP. And the reason why we sit here, not that we need a reason to record a Code Talk, um, but part of the reason why we sit here, nevertheless, is that when you listen to this episode, one and a half weeks ago, there was International Women's Day. And the month of March is actually International Women's History Month. We want to celebrate that, obviously. And since AI is in like everywhere at the moment, we thought we combine the topics uh, women in AI and um, record this episode of Code Talk. So, Katarina, how about you just tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do? Why are you here? And how did you end up doing AI at SAP? Yeah, I, first of all, uh, thanks a lot. And I'm really happy to be here. Um, yeah, as you already said, so I'm uh, the chief product owner of the AI services, uh, but uh, since I'm working for SAP, I was not always in the AI area. It actually was a long road to come there, to, to being with uh, AI at SAP. Um, and uh, maybe it's it actually it started, God, 15 years back on the university, which I, where I had actually my main topic around AI. There was not so big, at least I think at SAP it was not so big, but I think at the, at the university I was taking care on the, or was working in my master thesis on the um, pattern recognition. So it was really like on that you had uh, for Bosch, it was there that you have to do a um, defect detection on the camera lens mm -hmm. to see whether there are something, some scratches on it and something like this. And this is what I had to do there. And this was really, I loved working in that area. And I also had like the Pada kickers we had there also, where you have this big roboters who are playing soccer on the field. This was also a lot of interesting topics there. But when I joined then SAP, interestingly, I started at the database, at the HANA database and was... Uh, taking care on our programming, uh, the SQL script, which is a database programming language there. So far, far, far away from AI. But after then several years of being there at the core, um, I then decided, okay, I would like to go back to my home turf and really to start with AI. And this is where we had the um, AI services, where I then joined, I think, three years back and so. And now, I think since last year, we did the hype around AI and especially Gen AI is really uh, amazing. So, and this is where, of course, it's awesome to then now working exactly in this kind of area where everyone's now talking about, yeah. Really cool. I love hearing stories how other people end up in AI yeah. and especially women. Um, and when you just mentioned robots, I have a robot story to share, but it's not as cool as your robots because mine is made out of wood. <laughs> but when I was really, really little, I, I always tell people that like I was kind of pushed into this field of mm -hmm. computer science, but now that you say robots, I realized when I was little, I actually built a robot with my dad because I annoyed him so much and I loved robots and I was like five. So he made me a robot out of wood and I really loved it. I put this like cereal box on top of it as a head and I put my Walkman inside so it could talk. It was like a <laughs> shitty robot, obviously. I still have it in the attic and I always want to give it to my son, but I feel like with all the robots that exist right now, if I just come out with this wooden robot, he's going to be like, ah, no, not cool anymore. But... Yeah, we used to always love robots, so yeah. <laughs> that's a good reason to go into AI. <laughs> yeah, but it always usually starts really why where, where we are already a child, right? With all what we would like maybe to do later or somehow. Yeah. Something. Yeah. It was yeah. for me the same. I mean, my father always were uh, working in a software company there, and so we always had computers at home. So it was for me yeah. natural to work on PCs and doing something like yeah. this, so, uh, where I always was interested in doing something like this. But I didn't have a robot. This was really the later at the university, so I'm a little bit jealous about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad also always, so when he did home office, remember these, like, I don't, I forgot the word for it, but he had these huge suitcases full of, like, discs or what they were called. And yeah. then when he did home office, he would, like, have to change them so fast so that yeah. he would have, like, the whole code on the, it was hilarious. Anyway, my father also had the first uh, laptop or notebook, but it was, stuck. it was like this a huge <laughs> monitor where you had then to plug the keyboards in front of it. Yeah. It was crazy. This was like a, a but, yeah, suitcase or something like this. It was huge. <laughs> yeah. And now we just walk around with a MacBook under our exactly. arm. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on. Um, what do you do as a chief product owner of AI services? Um, What's your day? Like, what do you do all day? Yeah, I, I think I could say every day is different. <laughs> it's uh, but mainly it's really about. I mean, we are, have so with the AI service, we have several of them like uh, document information extraction, data add recommendation, process recommendation, and many more internal ones. And this is where together with the product owners, I'm working towards okay the prioritization from feature development and also um, aligning together with the line of businesses. 
because what our services are aimed for is really embedding AI into the line of businesses. But of course, we also have XR externally available as well via the B2B platform. But this, this is where we all have to take care and to get the priorities in the right order. Yeah, to discuss with the stakeholders and customers of what they need and to understand their requirements. And of course, also doing right resource planning around so that we have the products teams uh, well staffed. And um, so I think this is our, the main task overall of course also aligning with the product managers itself who are more or less also or not more or less they are actually working towards uh, the stakeholders and customers so it's like always like a exchange uh, and collaboration there and everywhere so um, but yeah every day is sometimes also different because different priorities maybe here there to change but yeah it's, it's interesting to work because it's never getting boring honestly yeah people. yeah that's so true when i want to have a meeting with you and i look at your calendar i always see like wow <laughs> yeah, sometimes you could also see of work. I also uh, hear quite often we should meet less and write more emails. I think sometimes I think it makes sense because yeah. we may also meet uh, too often, I think, during the week to discuss small things, which you could actually do yeah. also well, well, honestly speaking. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's the exact opposite to my job. I, I honestly, mm -hmm. I have basically one team meeting or actually two team meetings now and one meeting with my manager. And then once in a while I talk to you and that's like almost yeah. all the meetings I have or I mean to other product managers and stuff, obviously, but I rarely have meetings. So I'm always like when I see other people's calendars and they're like so packed, I'm like, yeah, but what I, also, really I have to admit, exhausting. I'm also blocking a lot of uh, um, slots there to, ah, do now we get mean, so like to do something, but to be like, so usually my <laughs> private appointments are always like that I can work on the strategy document. Because it's uh, where I also have to yeah. focus on right where we would like to go to. And I think now with last year, this Gen AI, I, I know it wasn't last, yeah, one year back, right? With the Gen AI or with the GPT, I think it changed so rapidly everything where you yeah. really also have to focus, okay, how we continue with our AI services. And this is where you also have to take time to look into. Yeah. Yeah. That's why in my calendar, I have also several blocks where I'm. Are you sure you want to say that on the recording? Now everyone is going to know you. Is this a block or is this a real meeting? Yeah. <laughs> That's me. the, the, they anyway have no other choice, right, of simply uh, pushing them. And I have to do the same, right? If I now have to also find a meeting with my leadership team or something like this, the same. I simply also put it somewhere and see. And they just have to work out. Yeah. yeah, depending yeah. on the importance, they might shift, but yeah. it's yeah. crazy. Shuffle it's really still, great. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned generative AI already. Um, and you said it's exciting to be part of it right now. Is there anything that excites you for the future? Like, what do you think? Where do you think AI is going at SAP when you talk about business AI? Um, um, no. I mean, where it's going to, I mean, what I now love about it, uh, because I think with now the Gen AI hype, but what's come, I think I have now the feeling that everyone has now an understanding what AI actually can achieve. And I think when I think back like two years back where we already had like around this AI services, they were there where we tried to integrate. But I had the feeling like that for customers, but also even for the lines of businesses, it was like always hard to uh, to look into how we can, what they can actually do with the AI uh, to to improve their processes and so on. But now with the Gen AI hybrid, it's so easy with the chat GPT, for example, to see of what, um, what AI is capable of. I think it's also easier to explain to them, okay, what else you can do. And that's why, and also with this, um, in the beginning where we hear that, yeah, there is like a large language models and this can uh, already answer things where you even didn't thought about that. Okay, this is okay. Even I was thinking about, okay, this that doesn't really work. And so now to see what there is capable, what um, ChatGPT is capable of or GPT itself, the large language models, I'm really amazed and to look into what will be in the future. But first of all, also for, I think, SAP, it's really uh, um important thing to do so to really I mean with all the processes we have around right to really optimize them to automize them and to really also ease the life of um, every um, employee and uh, at the uh, customer side to really improve also their lifetime by doing something else instead of always checking on invoices or doing this and checking what is matching where so this is again all automized I think there are so many areas where you can do and improve and um so that's why I'm also already looking forward to having this kind of automatization already in there. But even also this tool, the co-pilot we have there, which is, um, is out there, I think is really impressive of how this also can improve uh -huh. our daily life as well, right? So, yeah. and I mean, and then the private life also, ChatGPT is also is my life, right? To really look into and writing emails or whatever. It's awesome. Usually yeah. in the past, I always had to ask someone, please review this. 
now I can uh, have someone who's doing it for me and can even tell, please <laughs> yeah. uh, change it like this or that. Yeah. Uh, and it's not going to be sad about your feedback, you know? Exactly. <laughs> so just, yeah, we actually, the other day, my husband, uh, because you said private life, my husband was using it to identify a dinosaur because my son was like asking, what's this dinosaur? And we're like, I don't know. And then it actually came up with the right dinosaur, which is impressive because it's a really weird dinosaur. I wish I had it here, but it has like spiked ev spikes everywhere all over the body. Like, I mean, crazy. Um, but this is what you just said. I think this is what I also found interesting. We actually were using AI quite often already, right? Everyone who has like a mobile and uh, I think in the photo app itself, there's already also scanning mm -hmm. directly whether the yeah. dog or what kind of, I used yeah. it to identify what kind of spider I have in my apartment. And he was really saying that this was, I think last year there was a spider which was a little bit, a little poison. I'm not sure how it was called. Mm -hmm. But this is where you can identify, see what it is. And uh, and this is what I also then see is many people are even do not aware of who are not in the tech bro uh, uh, tech area. They are not even aware of where AI already yeah. helps to improve their life. And I yeah. think this is where uh, we also from dev side, but also, and I think also uh, this is where you're also doing really a great job uh, to really show the customers of what they can do and yeah. um, to really bring them and speed up the daily life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I also can't wait for like all the implementations that come now because um, like there's just so many possibilities, right? And I'm yeah. really excited how we also ethically like how, because I think that's also right. where SAP is really, um, mm. how do you say, like a role model actually for other companies okay. probably too, because we have really strict guidelines and... Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited how that's going to turn out. Definitely a, a lot to do there. Um, do you have anyone that, I don't know if in AI or just also earlier in your life that kind of like influenced the way you um, think about your career or yeah, just that had a big, that was a role model for you. I mean, is there anyone that made an impact? I mean, I, I, I because these questions, I also uh, sometimes um, in this kind of um, interviews, I also got asked quite often and I always thinking about it and I do not have a concrete role model. I think I see different people who really say, oh, yeah, it's um, this one, that one. I think it's a mixture. Of course, it's one which I already mentioned is, of course, uh, uh, due to my father, I was really working towards of um, having uh, uh, how to program to do this and to see what he is doing. But on the other hand, it's also my mother to see because she, and since we are now here also around this uh, Women's Day, is to see she was really at her time a working mom. So she was already working where my father stayed actually at home because he studied. And my mother was also um, already bringing the money home, something like this. But this is also like already for me also, Roma, that this for us was totally normal, that both are working and... Um, that's not like one is staying home or it's, it was so normal. And that's, I think this is when I was thinking about was for me also like, yeah, I'm, I'm leading by example to say, okay, yeah, this is why also in the future, it's totally natural to do so. Um, and then when it comes to my daily life, I think I always had here, there are certain role models for a certain amount of time where I was looking towards, mm -hmm. but I can't really say concrete who it was. I think I always have someone where I'm looking towards and see, okay, this is how I would like to do it or, um, yeah, I think um, there are several ones, but I can't ever always say concrete words. But honestly, it's really like what many people are saying in the end, it's also where it started are my parents, I would say, definitely. I love that answer. I was just thinking, I thought of people that I could name now. Mm -hmm. And then now that I hear your answer, I'm like, okay, no, she's right. Like it started yeah. so much earlier. It was definitely also my dad. And also nowadays that, I mean, I, I'm a mother and you know that I have two mm -hmm. kids and yeah. I love that you just mentioned this, that your mother was working because I'm struggling right now always with this, like, I, I think what a lot of women or couples actually are struggling, heterosexual couples are struggling with is that as a woman, I work and I mean, I don't need money from my husband anymore, right? But at the same time, I have like, or I used to have the biggest share of care work at home. Mm -hmm. And I remember how my mother didn't work when I was little. And I was always thinking like, so my dad is working and she's doing nothing. And nowadays I realized like my mother was not doing nothing. You know, my mother was doing everything. Like she was, I mean, your parents shared the task, so they probably, I don't know, weren't as frustrated. I don't know. But my mother, I always thought like, why is she so frustrated all the time? You know, because she did this gigantic work of like, I mean, she just did everything. My dad only went to work, you know, 
Yeah. And nowadays I realize what that means, like, and how important it is to actually share that. And it's awesome that you had that as a role model because we are still like fighting about how to actually do it. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 maybe, and to be honest, I maybe skip one part. Of course, a certain amount of time when she had both kids, because we were two kids at home, this is where really then my mom stayed at home for a certain amount of time. But however, at some point she decided, okay, she has to go back to work. This was when I was a little bit older, I think around 10. But when my sister was there, this is where she really were, went to work and my father was yeah. at home. But yeah, it was a mix then. Um, yeah, and I think in the end it was also like uh, going then for work again is also to see something else and to yeah. not always be at home. So yeah, I yeah. agree. But I think yeah. this is always quite challenging, yeah. yeah. Especially when, I mean, you don't have parents like you, you know, that, that mm -hmm. lived it that way. It's really yeah. cool. Um, yeah, so we already talked a lot about like all these topics that are interesting for women, especially <laughs> um, in this world today. And since there was International Women's Day and the mm -hmm. topic this year was, I think, inclusion or inspire inclusion, something abstract like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, how do you see or experience inclusion at SAP or in your job? Yeah, it's interesting because I also saw that, that this is a topic and this is where I'm also, also someone was asking me how you would like it. Do I have it? And I said, oh, I always have a hard time with that because I do not, when I started at SAP or even at the university, of, um, I never felt like left out or that I was like, um, of course you saw that there are not much women around, but okay, but it was not like that there was no inclusion, not at all, and you know, even especially in the developer area. So I never had like this feeling of being left out or something like this. So that's why I was always like, um, that I felt like included and so on. However, I think to continue on that, because I know that there might be also everywhere, some areas where it's different. This is, I see, I think it's especially maybe also not uh, outside of development areas. And also this is where it might be different. And I think what is important is that we have to be, all parties have to be more sensitive. I think uh, we, you know, as women also have to be also maybe still more sensitive towards that this change and also pushing this inclusion can't be happen by tomorrow. It always like have to be um, to also understand the other parties and vice versa. I think this is where I would say is the key to, to, to not push too hard, uh, but have more like a middle way of, um, and that all parties understand what it is about, what it is about to be women, but also what it is about to be a man or whatever. I think it has to be a mixture in the end. We should not forget about with the inclusion that we all have to include all and not yeah. only like, I, I, I understand that there might be, I said, other areas, but this is how I always often see it. And also when discussing also to um, the other party, it's like, um, also not always easy for them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I love that you say we have to include all because that's like always the struggle, right? That mm -hmm. the things that you don't see because you are not the one that's like suffering. I don't know, like, for example, I'm white, so I don't really know anything about racism. So my husband always has the racism problem because he's from Turkey and um, he's yeah. obviously like he has black hair and stuff. So, I mean, in his opinion, he has castanya hair. Yeah. <laughs> it says, but it's just black. I mean, <laughs> um, so we always have the struggle that I don't really understand when there's racism happening and he doesn't yeah. really understand when there's sexism happening. And yeah, yeah, it's just what you said this like to really listen to the other party. You know, that's important yeah, because that's sometimes important. we just can't yeah. see it. Or that's like, for example, my mother recently... Um, had an accident so she'll, now she's in the wheelchair and I never had this eye for like people with disabilities before because mm -hmm. I wasn't affected I had no one around me and now the other day for example I was at Ikea and and, and uh, the elevator was broken and there were people with um, wheelchairs in front of the elevator waiting and I thought like before my mother I would, honestly would have just walked past and mm -hmm. I wouldn't even have seen it or realized that there's a problem but this time I would like, I went to the Ikea people and I was like, yeah, so the elevators are broken and the people in wheelchairs can't get in now. But honestly, I don't think I would have had the eye for it if it wouldn't have been for my mother who now is struggling with this problem. So listening to others is definitely, um, yeah, we, we all can still learn that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so, okay. I lost my train of thought. I had a really good like way to get to the next question. And it's, <laughs> it's just gone. Good. Um, so I'm just going to read it out now. Blank. Um, as a woman in AI, what challenges have you faced and how have you overcome them? Oh, I must admit, I, I, 
<laughs> maybe it's not normal one to you. I didn't have any challenges. I mean, it, no. of course, not, not as a woman at AI, of course, there are yeah, a lot okay. of challenges around, <laughs> but not because I'm a woman, I would say. It's because I have, I'm have i facing the same challenges as everyone else around. I mean, our biggest challenge in AI is, as of now is really like uh, how to evolve also to what is Jedi and so on, what to do there, I think. Uh, so there are many challenges uh, also, and this is again technical, right? It's challenges around with the data and everything else. But I would not say that now from person perspective that because I'm a woman, I had any challenges there around. I think it's really like the challenges I have, I would say everyone else in our area has to do so. <laughs> and this is always, I would say in the end, it's data. This is the biggest challenge where yeah. gender I cannot help because it's uh, you might not need the huge amount of data anymore as yeah. we did in the past for training models. But this, I would see is the biggest challenge <laughs> for us, especially also uh, um, yeah, to, to train models and everything else. So this, I would see as a big challenge when I joined awesome. uh, when I joined it. Because I even at the university, it was for me when I had there like uh, working on AI and of uh, also um, working on this pattern recognition there and having there also we had uh, pictures from this um, a camera there and to, to work on that. I was not there. I was not also aware of um, that maybe not having data is a problem. But mm. now when I joined here and seeing like, okay, why are we not trained this? Why are we not doing it? Yeah, because we do not have the data. It's hard yeah. to get the data or to say, because we have to be, as you said, ethics around and also really working with the data towards that. This is also for our customers um, mm. that they know they can trust us. And this is where you really have to see and how to do. And this is where we also had to change, um, of course, certain processes here and there. But I wasn't aware of this in the, uh, in the beginning. So yeah. That's why I would say this our, yeah. was our biggest challenges. It's the... funny how you like mentioned this uh, at SAP with our customers and the data. Because I remember that when I started, I was always thinking, like, why doesn't SAP just do this? And why do we not just do that? And then at some point I realized, because SAP just doesn't do that. You know, like we have guidelines. We have to actually like watch out what we do. We don't want to upset our customers. We don't want to lose their trust. So everything we do has to be like really thought through and we can't just, I don't know, deploy a model and then say, here we are, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I was like starting at SAP, I don't know, like, I honestly don't know, seven, eight years ago, um, I always thought, oh, we should just be doing this and that, but no, um, that's what SAP is, why I, why I love SAP, you know, because we don't just um, deploy everything and then hope for the best. We actually think everything through. <laughs> yeah. We are very thorough that way. Yeah, yeah, it's different since uh, than being at the research or at, at the at the university where it's easier to do so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. at university, um, I had one. I mean, it wasn't really a challenge, but uh, I just that just came to my mind that example when you said you never face anything like that. I was, um, I remember it was actually my first day studying uh, IT at Hamburg University, and I came in, and I went to this lab like for math. I think it was a math lab. Mm -hmm. And the TA is like, you know, there's actually a lab for women. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Why would I now leave and go to a lab only for women? I'm like, what do they teach there? You know, I don't get it. So I was <laughs> like, this fits my schedule. I, I'm just going to sit down. And I was like, ever since then, I felt like it really depends on the room. Obviously, you walk into it. And right now, I feel like in my team right now, I do not have any problems mm -hmm. as a woman. But as a consultant, especially going to like different customers, when people, when I come in and I mean, I don't wear a suit, I usually like, I don't know, come mm -hmm. like this. And then the customers were like, usually like, so you are the AI expert. And then yeah. they would just talk to the next man in the room, even though the man had absolutely no idea about AI because I was the AI expert, but they would just talk to the men, you know? And then the men would always be like, Nora. And I was like, just talk to me. I'm sitting right here. You know? so. Yeah. Yeah, and this is why I agree. I think that's um, that's why I think in, at SAP it's always. And I said I'm I only can talk about where I was always like in the uh, in the development areas, where I said okay, I think this is where it's, it's good. I think there's mm -hmm. yeah, but not but as you know just said in other areas uh, outside of SAP it might be different. Where you really as yeah. a woman has see this difference, and especially also as you said going to customers and so on. So that's why. I totally agree on that this exists, is there, or was there, and is there. Um, but I think it's um, good that we're lucky. Not, <laughs> yeah, that's not here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what advice would you give other women or, I don't know, girls that maybe want to go into AI and AT, IT or tech in general? I mean, I think uh, the general advice would be really like, stay up to date. <laughs> because, <laughs> and this is very weird, you really have to be... Uh, always stay up to date because it changes every day 
recently what's happened in AI. Uh, even for me, it's hard to, with, as you said, with all the meetings happening around to also <laughs> then in the evenings, day after day, what's happening because we're like every day, new models are coming out, new large language models improved there and there. So I think the key is really like, you have to know what is happening around. You have to know what's uh, what's the latest, greatest thing there. So to be always up to date and always curious. I mean, this is a typical mm. thing I would say. Mm. And you have to love really your job because, yeah, it's, you have to do a lot around that. Yeah. 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 Stay up to date. That's a good point. I yeah. am preparing my presentation for Vegas next week right now. And whenever I think of something that's like, I'm yeah. going to say it like this. And then I, I search something about it and I'm like, shit, okay, that's not actually up to date at all. I, last week there was a new model and now we can do it this way. And oh, it's just like, ah, um, yeah, I actually once, um, the advice that I would give, I once was working for a very, very sexist manager. It was awful. And he was really like, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that, but he was an ass <laughs> and but he told me one thing, and that was actually very helpful. So I'm still grateful that I've met that weird guy. He said, um, Nora, when something sounds weird, it probably is weird. Yeah. And then you can just ask. Because I was always too afraid to ask questions, especially in a room full of people. I was like, should I ask this or do I just not understand it right? And he told me, like, he's like, Nora, you're smart. So if it seems weird, it probably is weird. And yeah, I never forgot that. And now I just, when I have a question, I just ask it because I'm like, I am smart, you know, and I probably have a point with this question. It's like, it's yeah. actually good advice because I agree, totally agree. Because and this is good that you said it because I also quite often sitting there uh, and I'm always, okay, what are we talking about? And then they're saying something, I'm sitting there, okay, I didn't, didn't hear this before. And I was looking around and I have the feeling everyone's so confident and so yeah. I'm asking this and then we're like the other starting. A good question. <laughs> and, oh, okay, good, okay. <laughs> but this was more like sometimes that I'm not aware of, oh, I'm, did I miss something here? Did I yeah, miss exactly. right? Yeah, yeah, and saying. when I was when I started here, I sometimes were googling parallel to <laughs> check on that. But uh, honestly, as you said, and this is also actually, I would like to even better than staying up to bed. So really, ask questions wherever you can. I think this is always yeah. the best thing, <laughs> and you have to do it because if you ask the question later on, then it's maybe not so good anymore. Yeah, then so, it gets awkward. Then yeah, gets awkward. exactly. Yeah. So by the end of the meeting, wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I mean, thank you so much for being here. Um, it was really fun talking to you. And I hope we have another cool talk very, very soon. So thanks a lot. And bye. Bye.